Thank you for that great introduction. We are three speakers deep into this session, so just take a quick moment, put your pen down. We don't need to do any of that stand-up nonsense. Just take a giant, deep breath, as big as your lungs can inhale. And just let it go. We'll do that one more time. Just reinvigorate yourself. All right, let's get into it. Bonus points, if you guys can help me, name this little creature right here. Oh, that was way too easy. All right. Yes, this is Scrat. If you don't know who this is, this is from the movie Ice Age. And this is our acorn-obsessed little furry friend. He's the comedic relief, or one of the comedic reliefs in the movie, and acorns, he loves them. They're his food, right? Who doesn't love food? And it's funny how it plays out in the movie. But basically, Scrat desperately lives acorn to acorn. He's fanatic about him. It's everything to him. And throughout the movie, it's very chaotic. The highs are high for Scrat, and the lows are low for Scrat. And it's definitely hilarious to watch from a third-party observer perspective. And in many ways, Scrat's enthusiastic yet unrelenting pursuit of his acorns was basically the perfect depiction of what my first nine years as an event rep kind of looked like. The highs were high, the lows were low, and it was definitely chaos. It was great when events were good. It was great when there was money in the bank. But when you have those two to three bust events back to back, it can kind of take you to a little bit of a dark place. I remember being a college student <laughs> and just honestly being embarrassed because I couldn't go out and have lunch with my friends or I'd overdraft my card. I remember justifying the squeakiness of my brakes because I couldn't afford to go get them fixed. And I was like, oh yeah, riding a bike is healthier. Is like, all of a sudden I started justifying my results. I was getting behind on my goals and honestly I just felt like I was letting all of my peers down and I was letting myself down. See what happened was that my vision with events was very short-sighted, living event to event. And it just so happened because of that short-sighted vision my results tended to be very short-sighted as well. What I learned was that when I started to think more long-term, that amazing things started to happen. I needed to think more long-term. Instead of focusing on where my next acorn was gonna come from, I learned during those nine years, or near the end of those nine years, that if I just planted the acorn, that in the future, I could have a forest of acorn trees giving me and providing me acorns every single year. Thinking long-term allowed me to change my perspective. It allowed me to change my strategy, my systems, and ultimately, it changed my results. I learned that my time that I spent at the booth could actually pay me dividends for years to come. So it was because I was hungry to learn, it was because I invested in a mentor, and it was because I invested in being at events like these that I became a really great sales rep. And what I'm here to tell you right now is to consider becoming not just a great sales rep, but by becoming an amazing business owner. It's scary to think how many Cutco owners actually continue to buy Cutco in the future. When you're at the events, how many times are you asking the question, how long has it been since you last saw Cutco? And you hear 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. When Jim St Jr. was asked, what is the annual lifetime purchases of the average Cutco owner? The stats show that it is 1.1% or excuse me, 1.1 orders per Cutco owner. To put this into perspective, think about this. This means that Cutco owners are rarely ever 
continuing to buy after their original purchase. Only buying once for a product they love. So what does this tell us? What do we know? Well, we do know that Cutco owners love their Cutco. We do know that they could and they should be investing in other lines of Cutco. We also know that they love giving and receiving Cutco gifts. And once you understand the power of a customer's second order, can you truly appreciate the possibility of having three plus orders from every single Cutco owner? So I'm gonna share with you my five keys to getting your second order. So who needs to listen to this message? Everybody. <laughs> Everybody, boom. Here's the deal. There's people in this room that might not even be sure if they're still gonna be in Cutco in a couple weeks, a couple months, let alone a couple years. So how do you know if this is gonna be something you need to listen to? Well, here's the deal. In Vast Action Mentoring, when we're working with our entry level reps at 50 grand, that are coming into mentoring and they're involved in events, we have three main priorities and I'm gonna share those with you right now. Before anything I say matters, these three things matter and this might put some things into order for some people here. That is your new customer approach, your past customer approach, and your objection handling. These need to be level 10 on the scale of one to 10. When you master these, you unlock the opportunity to really make it in this business. So if you cannot say that you're a level 10 out of 10 mastery on those three areas, then I would focus on that first because it's really hard to implement anything else from this conference unless you're actually closing orders. Because if you're not closing orders, we're not making money. If we're not making money, we've got all those dark feelings and all the bad stuff. So once this is done, Everything else I say right now is gonna really matter to you. So look at it this way. If you see yourself running a smart business and that is important to you, if you see the value in becoming more efficient in your business, if you see the value of systemizing your success, and those systems eventually improving your income potential, then listen up and make it a goal to implement one takeaway from this message every campaign until you feel 10 out of 10 confident that you can accomplish achieving your second order with every Cutco owner. I'm a big believer that you can't have your 10th order without your second order. So let's start making ordering from us habitual. Let's make it a common practice. It's very often, more often than not, that it's not until a customer is face to face with another Cutco rep or a Cutco representative at Costco or that Cutco sends them a catalog when they're making their future next purchases. And for a long time, we believe that you don't do service calls for people until they're maybe even seven years out. But what the stats show is that people love Cutco, people love you, and people love buying Cutco from you and that they will be buying Cutco, and they could be buying Cutco within as little as a couple days, weeks, or even months of their very first purchase. So how do we turn that on? Key number one, play long-term, think long-term. The question I have for you is, how far out am I considering my business plan? Or better yet, what would I love my business to look like in three, five, or even 10 years from now? See, taking off the short-term lenses of my business plan and putting on the long-term lenses of my business plan allowed me to view my business from an entirely different perspective. And what this did was this allowed me to refocus my time, refocus my energy. This actually changed what I said, what I think, what I do at the customer with every single interaction. And once I realized that I kept trying to grasp on to that next cool big thing, that next script, that next program, 
that I realized that I was really just stepping over dollars to pick up dimes. I wasn't playing the long-term game. I wasn't even utilizing all the tools that were currently in my tool belt. And that when I refocus this on my long-term vision, that I actually refocus my time in a way that continues to pay. I never thought when I interviewed with Cutco that I would be doing this as a full-time career. But what has happened is that I am able to support my family and I'm not stressed out about my being able to hit my mortgage and being reliant being a slave to my next transaction for my financial security. Key number two, where is your script focus? Are you focusing on getting a transaction or are you able to open up your mind to thinking next, to thinking next level? Brandon Brown shared with us becoming the chess grandmaster. Chess grandmasters are actually thinking three steps ahead but what even if you thought two steps ahead? Instead of thinking about getting the transaction and having your script set up to take an order, what if instead we considered having our scripts to actually help us earn partnerships? So the question I pose to you is, what is my overall script communicating to my customers? See, the problem is, that we pick up a piece of script here, a line there, we hear a great phrase or a, an objection handler, and we go back and we try and throw these all together into our scripts and we're like, we did it, we did the thing, we took notes, I'm actually reviewing my notes. And then what ends up happening is we get these Franken scripts that are just piecemealed together from a little Brandon Brown, a little Curtis Jacobs, a little Josh Muller over here. And we kind of wonder why we're not getting the results that we want. So yes, learn great verbiage, take great notes on these, but learn to have a core value to your entire script, a backbone, something that strings and ties it all together. What is that? And having this long-term vision, being focused on creating partnerships, having the vision of not just earning orders, but earning partnerships, earning their second order, is going to set you up for success. This now gives you a core value that every word, every phrase, every sentence, every line of your script can now align with. Work to earn partnerships, not just orders. For me personally, these particularly four scripts have actually helped streamline for me my vision of achieving my second order through Curtis Jake uses power intro. Hey, I'm not just some normal rep. This is what I do full-time professionally. And if we end up getting something today, uh, I look forward to earning your business and actually becoming your Cutco Kitchen partner, supporting your life in the kitchen, making it easier, uh, and ha helping that become more enjoyable. Kareem El Tawanzi, the Cutco Kitchen focus. Focus on solving their main problem today, but set yourself up for future transactions through program and package awareness. No one's gonna accidentally just assume that you sell cookware. You need to communicate that. You need to communicate the Cutco vision. And unless you're selling Cutco kitchens to every single customer, there's more good Cutco for them. Josh Muller's famous let go. Here's what's gonna happen today. Here's what's gonna happen with your order. And by the way, here's what my marketing's gonna look like. Here's how I'm gonna serve you in the future. And of course, I, if you haven't heard this message, it's a great message, but the piggyback approach, which is simply giving customers permission to continue ordering with you for the next 30 to 60 days after they leave you at the event. Ms. Jones, you're gonna absolutely love your cut code. This was such a smart decision. It's gonna feel so good when you go home and you cuss out your knives tonight, knowing that you're only a couple more days away from never having to do that again. What's gonna happen though, just like everyone, is you're gonna get home and you're gonna get in a fight with your peeler, your ice cream scoop, and your pizza cutter, or you're gonna get invited to a wedding, or you're gonna need to get a gift for your husband's birthday or Father's Day. And you're gonna realize, like everyone else, that Cutco is the solution. And so when that happens, 
just text me and I can apply the savings that you earned from the discount at the event today and make sure that that carries over piggybacking your discount for the next 30 to 60 days. So when that happens, just text me and I'll make sure to get that out to you. Boom. We just gave permission for them to place their second order. Key number three, CRM competence. Oh my lanta. It, okay, here's the question. Am I utilizing the tools that are currently in my toolbox? I would be very interested and curious to see how many people are actually functionally operating in their CRM every single day. See, the problem for me was that I was becoming a slave to my next transaction. Like Scrat, I was desperately living order, order, event to event, just grasping onto those acorns and loving it when I had them and hating it when I didn't. But once you understand that the CRM allows you to organize your business, which by the way, if we could just be honest, who feels like they could honestly be a little bit more organized in their business? There you go. And this also allows you to serve your relationships better. So once you understand that the functionality of the CRM can allow you to do things that will make you money, being able to say, who all bought from me at this specific event? Boom, that handles marketing to that next event. You could be like Kelly Kinzer, where customers come every single year to spend money with you. You can't do that if you don't have an organizational tool. What about being able to say, oh, I don't know what I'm gonna do next month. I don't have any events, but I do have a tool that I can go in and I can say, who lives within 30 miles of me that hasn't been serviced in the last three years that I still like as a customer? Boom, you can put that into the system and it will pump it out. This is, the CRM is a money-making tool and is currently, I believe, to be far underutilized in the vector community. Realize that not all customers are the same. How do you rank them? How do you rate them? How do you know? What's really cool is that by utilizing these types of notes, ranking, and statuses in my CRM, that had allowed me to actually focus on spending my time, my effort, my energy with the customers who have the highest future buying potential. Have you ever just closed an order, maybe a set, like a, a, a block set, and it was pretty easy, and you're just like, oh man, if I just loved on this relationship, if I, I just stayed connected, if I just went, a, if I just did a little bit extra work, I know these people would probably continue to buy from me. And yet, what do we do about it? Before, when I was living event to event, order to order, being desperate for my next transaction, I would just go on to my next customer. But when I put on the lens of thinking long term, I made it a focus to look at all these different aspects and make sure that I was filling these in. And it took a little bit extra effort. It took a little bit of effort energy but just like going to the gym or doing anything that dis discipline is required, it has allowed me to actually be able to build a business that provides repeat orders frequently and often. What's beautiful about getting great at understanding and ranking your customers is that it unlocks more clarity in your business. See, when I started ranking customers, I actually knew who my top customers were. I would know who I would be marketing to. I developed great marketing plans for my top customers and what this did was this allowed me to actually get more clarity on my marketing for the year. And then when I got better clarity on my marketing for the year, it actually gave me more clarity on my business budget, which made both my wife and my CPA very happy. So what does it look like to get good at the CRM? In the CRM, which we use Vast Action, it's my favorite tool because they actually have it designed specifically for the Cutco business, is that Amy Moeller has actually gone in and actually done about 10 hours worth of video content that's neatly and nicely organized. And if you have not gone through those videos, then I really feel like you're doing yourself a disservice. 
If you're going to do this at some point eventually, I would make it a priority, assuming that you have the three basic scripts memorized, that that would be the very next thing I do. Because it's like leveling up. It's like getting in a video game and as soon as you get that power up, you get it for the rest of the game. So if you're gonna do it at some point anyway, you might as well do it now and save yourself the nine years that it took me to implement these systems into my business. Any assistant, any partner, anyone that works with me, their very first task is to go through those 10 hours. And that might sound dreary, that might sound daunting, but then again, I remember being a college student, spending way more than 10 hours in classes I didn't like, that weren't even gonna pay me, and in fact, I was paying massive dollars to be there for. And yet I could take this one 10 hour class and it would functionally give me the tools and the understanding of how to implement these systems I'm teaching you right now. Key number four, make it easier for your customer to place their next order. So here's the question I pose to you. What am I doing right now to set up my customer's next order? What am I doing right now with this customer placing their very first order? Yes, I'm thinking that. What am I doing to help them place their next order? See, the problem is that I was unintentionally making it very difficult for my customers to buy again. And this led to their next orders being when we were face to face. And in some cases, that was five, seven, or even 10 years later. And so what I found is that these tools have actually been much more powerful in helping me convert those orders now. These make it easier for the customer to place their next order. Things like operating in the CRM, having a digital business card, right? Like who here loves answering calls from numbers that they don't recognize? <laughs> Besides the one dude who probably trolls on people every time they call them with an un unknown number. But, the beautiful thing is, is that if you're thinking about this, put yourself in their phone so that when you ring, they know it's you. Make it easier. Leaving pieces. Yesterday, you got to see Josh Moeller in his famous Let Go share the quad fold. This is a tool I wish existed so many years ago, but didn't really exist until two or three years ago, I think. And it's really no other place that you can get a bird's eye view of every product package and program that we offer our customers. And so at every leaving encounter, I'm not just sending away my customer with a carbon copy receipt that they can't read or an email that's in their inbox for their receipt. They're legitimately leaving with my contact information in their phone. They are leaving with a list of what they're getting and what their focus is for the next time we connect. They're getting a confirmation email. I am letting them know what the process is for their order. And my confirmation email is actually articulated in a way that actually provides value and also continues to align with the long-term vision of placing their next order. Now, as a gift, I will be sharing with you guys what that email looks like and sounds like, and you can use it if you like. And then having an email campaign. What are you doing to stay peak of mind with your customers? What are you doing to help share stories about how one of your customers uh, gave Cutco for the wedding gift or a Cutco grandma bought 10 galley sets for all of her grandkids and that when she passed away and she'd only given away two, they were searching in her house and they found these eight other boxes and each of the boxes had their grandkids name on there. And it was just really cool that even though grandma was gone that at their weddings over the next decade that each of their kids had their cut set from grandma. See, it's these stories that are so powerful to be sharing with your customers, and it's these stories that actually sell these programs for you, and you can do this through email campaigns. You can design your own campaigns, and how do you do that? Well, those 10 hours will explain it. Or you can also do what a lot of top reps do, and that's delegate that type of information out, which we've seen with Vast Action, and they predominantly do most of my marketing tools as well. Make it easier for your customer. And key number five is have an onboarding plan. 
My onboarding plan used to be, I hope I see them again. I hope they order again. That would be really nice. My onboarding plan used to be, I'll go onboard new customers next week and at the next event. That was my onboarding plan. See, after four months, it is important to me that my customers know my name by heart. Are you branded with your customers? It is important to me that my customers know how to get a hold of me. It's important that my customers know that I am going to be sending texts, emails, and letters, and that they, are, that they know to interact with them. It is important to me that after four months, a customer should be able to tell me what they're excited about getting next. And it's important to me that after four months or within four months or sooner, they should know how to refer me and hopefully have already referred me. Do you guys see the value of these thoughts, the values of these implementations that you, when you plant your acorn, you're creating a field, a harvest that you can reap year after year. See, the problem for me was that my customers didn't know the answer to any of those questions. And it was through systemized tools like creating an onboarding process that actually helped me convert. So here you can actually see that at the time of a new customer, they're getting their receipt and they're leaving pieces. They know to expect their confirmation email. I call it a Monday text, but within a week, they will have received a text message from my assistant having them save my contact card into their phone number, which by the way, if you use texting base or some sort of texting platform, that is saved in there as my work number. So whether I'm calling them from my work number, my text line, or they're receiving texts from my personal cell phone, it still shows up as Cool Hand Luke. Seven days later, they get an order tracking text from my assistant. Vector is now sending emails to you, notifying you daily of the processes of the orders received and the orders that have been shipped out. And so it's just very cool that my customers are now getting a proactive text and it's not taking extra time from me. Now, are you in a place where you can have an assistant? Maybe not, but you probably have some time and you probably don't have thousands of customers necessarily. But just think about what can you be doing to stay peak of mind? What can you be doing to be leveraging so that 120 days later, they know your name, that they know how to get a hold of you, that they know to interact with your marketing, that they know what they're excited about getting next, and that they know how to refer you. On day 60, they actually get another text. Hey, by the way, I hope you're loving your knives. I hope you still have all your fingers. By the way, if there's anything you're still interested in, we just happen to have only a couple days left. If you're still interested in piggybacking the savings you earned from your original order. Either way, let me know. I appreciate you and I look forward to serving you for years to come. Every month, getting value-added content and sale promotions. If you guys are not currently actively running sale promotions with your existing customers, we are missing out on the call to action for people to be purchasing. Having to be face-to-face -face with your customers at a service call or at an event is no longer the only way your customers could or should be buying. Right now, Vast Action, Stacy Barton leads the way having sold over $100,000 over the phone from just three sale promotions she ran to her customers last year. See, it is within my best interest, it's within my framework that whether they took advantage of the piggybacking approach, whether they already knew that they wanted to add more, whether they were reaching out or not, I wanna create an opportunity to allow them to make their second purchase within the first three to four months of their order. So as we wrap up this message, I pose these questions. What would my business look like if I put more focus on earning my second order from every customer before I even met them. See, when we do this, I see more people in this room fast-tracking their way to becoming a 500K plus per year rep. I see us improving our lifestyles through systemized success, and I see us reaping what we have sowed this year for years to come. 
So I ask you, how long before you master the first three scripts, and how long will you be a slave to chasing your next order? Thank you very much.